Welcome to the Law Firm Growth Podcast, where we share the latest tips, tactics, and strategies for scaling your practice from the top experts in the world of growing law firms. Are you ready to take your practice to the next level? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Law Firm Growth Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Jan Roos, and I'm here with a good friend, first-time podcast guest, though, Enrico Lynchier. So Enrico is co-founder, would you say? Founder? Legal Gen? Yeah, founder of Legal Gen. Okay. And um, Enrico was introduced to me by a friend of the pod, Tom Boris, and then another friend of the pod, Julie Steinbacher. And I just realized that these guys were doing a lot of stuff with some of the biggest firms that we've ever encountered as clients. And the more I've gotten into what Enrico and his team are doing with Legal Gen, the more I realize that this is something that people on the podcast have to hear about. So super happy to have you on the show, Enrico, and ready to uh, get into the story and then let people know what you got going on. Hey, thanks for having me, Jan. You know, I'm I'm glad we got to we got introduced to each other. You're doing some fascinating stuff myself, uh, yourself, and um, you know, glad to be part of your network. So, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I'm the founder of LegalGen. I mean, it's been a long journey as far as software developing products. I mean, I've been in the software industry, IT industry, but IT is big, right? So I kind of like to narrow it down to software delivery. I've gone back between corporate America and, and having my own my own startups. But the journey for Legal Gen really started out. I would say like 10 years ago, I was in a medical software company. And I owned a medical medical software company. And yeah, I was a reseller, you know. And when you really when you're a reseller, you kind of you, you kind of have some restrictions or constraints as far as what you can do. And I'm like, you know, if, if there's an industry and a space and a problem I can solve, you know, then that's that's what I want to do. And I, I didn't know at the time I was going to be an attorney and I was going to be in, in this space. But I, I sold that company, went back to corporate America, and then I started a software development company. And then as far as for me, uh, the software development company, I was in, I was in now. Uh, uh, the BNI, you know, and I was developing software, you know, but I have a culture that the, it's, it's important to talk about the culture because I like to partner with my clients. I like to be a little different about the way that I provide a service, you know, in software, everybody has change management. You can't just, you can't, you know, you, you don't want to institute change because it's expensive. So I developed a product where change is not going to be something that is going to be, that I ask my clients not to do. I actually promote it. But then, you know, one of my clients, one of my contacts in my network was an attorney here in Dallas, Carol Buttress, and I was going to do my, I was actually going to do my will with her, you know? And so we furl program and, and I talked to her and then when she, when, when I talked to her, she's like, okay, you got to come see me three or four times. I think it was less, but she two or three times. This is going to be the process. And, and it just didn't seem like it was a good fit for me. Um, at the time to go through that process. So I asked her, I'm like, you know, why? why? So I basically I said to her, I'm going to wait, wait a little bit and, and maybe do it later. And, and we got to talking and she's like, you know, Enrico, there's this demographic like yourself that I just can't touch. You know, there's just, I'm, I'm working for a big law firm and I'm just not able to to service them. So let's talk about it. Let's Let's see what we can do. And that's when I said, okay, I, I met with her partners and we walked through the process. And estate planning is, is very unique because you really design a plan. It's a lot of consultation and you really make a huge difference as an authority to do an estate plan. And, you know, you don't know that until, until you learn about it and, and about, you know, but while you do that, there are some decisions and there's some first state. It's I kind of, I'm going to call it static, but you got the legal language and then you have the dynamic data and the decisions that have to go in there. So we developed it. It took some time for me to learn and, and develop it for her practice. But the really cool part about that story is that when we were finished, I realized, one, it's a pretty unique industry. It's, it's most attorneys, people know about each other. They, they know each other, but there was no conversion. She was doing what she's doing today. She was still seeing her clients. But then every, every month, there's a couple of clients like myself that she was able to service afterwards that are just kind of going through the estate plan. They can do it online, which is legal gen. So that's kind of like the start of legal gen that, that, and how it got started. And then it expanded from there, you know, with at first in Dallas and on, onwards. Okay, that's awesome. And then just to kind of take something out of that too, and what I think is super fascinating about, it, I think everyone that's listening to this show at some point in their career, especially if they're a estate planning attorney, heard the words, that sounds awesome. I don't think this is the right time for me. I don't have the money for it right now. Oh my God, I want to do this so much. 
So what you were able to do with her initially and with more of the clients you've worked with since is essentially opened up, you know, an additional market for those people and kind of almost like being able to reach uh, kind of competing directly with clients or, you know, competitors like LegalZoom, but also, you know, just kind of helping this access to justice thing that everyone's like really been, you know, a huge, huge movement in the, in the industry so far, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the key that it's, it's you're creating additional opportunity. You, you don't replace what's happening. You can with my product because my product has grown, it's matured, and now we can you know do some drafting. We can do front end as far as I call it a, a digital intake and a tool that we have. But the key part is that our clients, my clients, first the passion that I have for the product is because I solved something for me, and that's the best part. You know, I solved something that works for me really well. Now, the product now doesn't solve it just for myself, but, you know, I'd like to be online. I'd like to be on my phone. I, I'd like to be able to make my decisions anywhere I am. You know, I'd like, but at the same time, I don't want to go with LegalZoom. I, I you know, I, I want to talk to an attorney. I want to connect with their office. I want to make sure it's a culture match. So that's where I feel like whenever I developed it and everything I did, which was primarily from all my clients, every time I had a new client, they would teach me more. And I was able to incorporate it in the product. And that's how the product grew. But at, at, at all times, it's like not creating a competitive environment. I'm not replacing a, a, the process that they have today. I'm not competing with LegalZoom. I'm not competing with Elder Council. It's a unique product that's catered specifically for my clients. And that's where the earlier part that I said, it's not about change management, right? I want my clients to tell me how they do their workflow. And I want to match exactly the way that they do it and create a system for them that they can't get anywhere else that articulates their culture to their clients while it's able to get them more clients. And that's that's how the product is is really organically grown because the clients that really like it and, and they really latch on to it and, and, you know, they get to use it for either, some clients don't even use it particularly immediately to get more clients. They just use it for a particular problem that they need to solve within their practice. Yeah. And one of the things I want to pick out here too, because it's, you know, you've been able to automate a good deal of the back end process for a lot of the clients that we, uh, you know, that I'm familiar that you've worked with as well, too. And there's almost like two huge implications for that. Like, one, what's the kind of time commitment for some of these things when you're, we're talking about getting somebody an automated sort of package? What's the time commitment for one additional will for the attorney to do? You mean in my system? Yeah. Once you get everything up and running. So team is so not maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's there's some cliche term, there's some cliche terminology, right? Mm -hmm. Automation. I'm saving you this much time. So I don't want to talk about it. I don't like to talk about it because it's my client's business. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's also gonna depend about it's also gonna depend whether how they do business, right? And how much they've implemented and what they've automated, right? But I can say that. I do, I, you know, I, you do have to in marketing and terminology. There are clients that I have. I mean, there's a client in, in, in Dallas, Texas, Lori Birch, and she has done some numbers with me and she's worked with me. She's been tremendous impact on my business because she's told other people about what she, you know, what she's been able to do with my solution and, and with LegalGen. And she's talking about a 70 to 90% time savings, um, you know, per will that she does. And she does every transaction, every will, another transaction, every estate plan in her system, but she calculates for her whole office. So it's not just for the attorney. The attorney is the most expensive time and that's, but either way, they, they're going to review the document. They're going to look at the document, you know, whether they do it in another system or in my system, it's a little faster because the system auto-generates the document, which is their templates, which is the, the unique part that I'm talking about. But I've really heard about 70 to 90% savings, you know, when it's fully implemented. Now, if it's a complicated case that, you know, you can't just automate quite yet, then we're not having those numbers. But for the most part, there's some pretty, there's some pretty substantial time savings that, that I've heard from my clients. Yeah. And the other thing I was kind of um, curious about, I was, <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to talk about this without making it seem like a complete setup. But, you know, I love to talk about the stuff that you've gotten that involves no attorney time, like the, uh, the fully DIY plans you've been able to in, implement for some clients. Yeah. So, so there's portions of where you get some benefits. So there are clients that have typically, so I got one client in Massachusetts, Tiffany O'Connell. And I mean, she has a very, very good use case. She implemented my product. We took some time. It was early on. So right now the implementation goes much faster, but she implemented the product. And while she was implementing it, it was right during COVID and she picked up a legal plan. And the reason why she did that is because the cost of a legal plan is not, is, is not substantial enough to justify clients doing it, right? Because if, you know, 
my clients. If you're an attorney, you're going to do it. And the money that results from that is just, you know, it takes the same time generally, as we all know, when, when you have a client, um, you know, I'm going to call it an end user. It's going to take the same time. But she, she said, you know, I now have this automate where a client can call me. So the way that a legal plan works is they pay the attorney. So I pay per month. If you're in corporate America or if you want to, you pay per month. If you got a traffic ticket, if you want to do an estate plan and you want to set up a company, you can call and then they'll pay the attorney. So generally, it feels like it's a lower cost type of target market, but but it's not because it's mostly people that are in corporate America. So um, because it comes with the package. So then because she was able to say, I'm going to use this product. And now that I don't have to generate my documents myself. I don't have to go in a drafting system. I don't have to do it. And they're my documents and it's fully automated. So the person that's coming in the legal plan comes through, they go in the system and they're finished, right? And then my client then gets the documents, they can sign it remotely or they can sign it in the office. So I, I think we, we were live like maybe in January and then in, in July, I was on the phone with her and she was doing a, a referral and, and, and kind of supporting my business and what we're doing. And she's like, yeah, and she told clients, she never told me. She's like, yeah, I've made $60,000 off, you know, Enrico software. It's like, well, this is great. But I called her. I'm like, you know, I thought the transactions were that large. And, you know, what does it mean? She goes, but Enrico, it's not just the fact that I'm getting X dollars from the legal plan, right? What happens is these clients become my clients. And over time, they're worth a lot more. 90% of the time, I upsell them. I talk to them about something else. So now that I had the ability for them to go in it and do it themselves, I was able to generate that much more money. And of course, now if she was, if you were to talk to her now, she'd say it's doubled and, and tripled in that money because, you know, it, it kind of elevates or, you know, multiplies. So the DIY portion would be to think of it like, you know, if you're a young adult kids that typically you don't want to deal with quite yet because they're just going to do a simple will and they can go through the process. And therefore, yes, they're a good target market for a system like this. But the automation is allowed to really expand into all the other areas once you get the client. And now we're even looking at, you know, doing some special needs planning and dementia planning and automating that as well. Because again, the target market that typically are people that are going to do it for their parents that have dementia, they want to be online and they want to do it. And, you know, and they actually pay, still pay the higher amount, higher fees while they're doing it online. So they save a lot of large time savings, but same return. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so cool because it's like, when you think about it, almost every single attorney is in some variety of the exchanging time for money trap. And one of the things that I see all the time, because now we have all kinds of prospecting calls. We probably have, you know, 10, 15, 20 demos a week. And we talk to people all the time that are stuck in these ruts where they're on you know, local businesses, uh, you know, attorney of record, or, you know, they're on some insurance program, or God forbid, some of these, you know, referral services that like really heavily cap what they're able to charge. And it sucks because they're putting the same amount of time. And I'd even argue more. And, you know, you, you might know the same thing from your class, Rico. Sometimes the guys you cut a deal are coming in for cheaper, more of a hassle than the ones that have more money that you're charging more. But it sinks because these guys end up getting in such a huge rut. But what I think is so amazing about this is not only does it help people get away from that kind of a potential trap. There's so much like, you know, if you if you could just imagine with, you know, perfect, like, you know, godlike omniscience, the people who said no, meant it, would have gone for something cheaper. There's so much breakage in everyone's pipeline that they're just letting go. And the other thing too, with that situation, you're talking about the attorney in Massachusetts, that opens up like, you know, it almost kind of reminds me of like the old, uh, you know, Russell Brunson style tripwire thing, right? It's like you're getting paid to market essentially, right? And then you have all of the upside of whatever comes up from the, you know, upsells or anything that comes into it. And, you know, the other thing too, is like, you know, if, if people are doing high level work, that's fantastic. It's, it's great. But the thing that I will say is, and I, I think this is an advantage is that like the more people you can get in your total throughput of clients, every single one of those people is a potential referral source. So, you know, if you're making 10, 20 grand a month, if that comes from 10 people instead of two people. I mean, you know, it's the same money you're taking home, but that's 10 more people that can or eight more people that you can refer out, right? So it's so cool. I haven't seen anything like this to the point where it's just like people are able to really break this trap and, and, and get like a real productized so side to like their own estate planning business. But um, yeah, yeah let, let's talk about some more of those things too. So it's like, you know, as far as uh, kind of those, uh, those outcomes, like what other stuff have people been using with, uh, with uh, automating this stuff in, their, in the platform? Any other like cool case studies that you can share? Yeah. So, I mean, I got, I got, so I thought the case studies are all about the attorneys, right? The reason why this product resonates so well, and I'm so excited and passionate about it, is because it serves, like I mentioned earlier, it serves a need for me. 
right? And then, so so before I talk about all the case studies of, of my clients, I, I talked about something that's a bit close to me, you know, pretty, pretty recent. My, um, my mother-in-law, she had dementia. She passed away since, and she's she had um, Bonnie Louie dementia. I mean, it's terrible. It went really fast, you know. But the reason I'm talking about it is because my wife and my brother-in-law, they came here, and it was interesting because, you know, they needed to get her power of attorneys, right? Now, before my brother-in-law knew in detail what I was doing, you know, he's looking, you know, and, and you're doing so many things. You're trying to support, and you're trying to be there, so you're not really thinking about the necessities. And, and as I'm listening to a conversation, and, and he's like, you know, we need to get a power of attorney. Right. So I'm like, well, what do you, what, you know, have you talked to some attorneys? I'm thinking, well, I got quite a few attorneys. He goes, yeah, but we need it now. And, you know, I got someone scheduled two weeks out and they want to meet with me and consult with me. And I, I, we just need it now. I said, okay, no problem. So go ahead and go online. I'm here to one of my clients and fill this out. Right. And the product literally was able to, you know, he was able to go in, print the power of attorneys. But what happened is he was so excited. I mean, first of all, he gave me some props, which I like, but he was so excited that, you know, that's the attorney he went with just because she had that available online. And his experience was so much better than to have to go in and talk to someone. So, you know, we all want to provide value. We all want to create value. And to have a product that you can have online that an attorney could have for their clients and create value when you have someone that, is able to, you know, just go online and print it out. And of course, that attorney now became the attorney that did all the planning for him because he needed quite a bit of the dementia planning was a bit late. So that's kind of the, the end user story about an experience that we don't think about. But then, you know, I've had an attorney that, that wrote me also, um, also in Dallas, and she said that, you know, they she had a client in hospice and 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 they, they needed some signatures and and you know it, it happened so fast it was during COVID and they could just go online and do it and she just kind of thanked me for having having the software and those are just some some really good feel stories about being digital about something that you weren't able to do not whether it was driven by COVID or it's driven by the industry but it's there now and it exists so that to me is is just a story that because it's so close to me so I constantly think. When I'm developing this software, even while we have a lot more clients, and it's hard to keep adding to it and adding to the roadmap of your product, but I'm constantly seeing scenarios that I can solve, that a product can solve for my clients and their end user that then creates value. So that to me is a good use case. And then, you know, we got a lot of different, I call it variations. I mean, we have on a client in Mississippi, Danny Mayhorn, and he he's very simple. He implemented this so quick because he had he has, you know, some clients that are financial advisors and, you know, they had a certain clientele that they wouldn't refer to him because of, you know, again, it would require quite a bit of work and understanding and meeting, but then he created this product that he could just provide to them so that now they're able to just give that to their clients and then it's a client right away. And same thing, like my first client in Dallas, I mean, the payments and everything is collected and fully automated. Um, so it's just an additional money stream that he's able to get while the financial advisor and the end users have a better experience. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, you know, to kind of co-sign on that whole thing, as far as just getting, helping the situation. I mean, I always say this for for people that are on like, you know, demos, if people aren't aware of it, it's just, we got a lot of people in this country that, that need documents that don't have them. It's like, what, 60% plus. And, you know, not every single one of those people, like, you know, to your point, has the time to go through a consultation process. Like, you know, a lot of the time stuff is too late. I mean, also, you know, I, I hate to, you know, let people use this <laughs> as an objection, but sometimes people genuinely don't have the money or it's not the right fit. I mean, I would love for everyone to be charging, you know, four or five K to retirement age people. But the truth is, it's like, you know, there's a lot of people who are, 35 right now that probably need this, who might not make it to there, whether they know it or not. And it's better to have access to that stuff for the attorney and for, you know, the world as a whole, if they ask me. So, you know, it's also cool too, just like the creativity that you've had with your process, Enrico, and being able to turn some of those different visions into like real implementations that people are using um, is fantastic. So I want to dig into that a little bit more. So, you know, when you work with a new attorney, what's your process for finding out what they do and how are you able to map that into the platform that you end up creating for them? Yeah, so, I mean, just just to go back on what you're saying, you know, about, about the ability for me to, you know, I'm, I'm going to call it solve the industry challenges and, and make things digital. And, you know, I mean, there are, there are clients that are actually able to now you know, and I'm, again, I'm close to this, right? Because my kid, my son just went to college. You have no control. I mean, it's, it's almost crazy. 
Like all of a sudden, like he had to remind me, hey, Enrico, you know, I'm not Enrico. He said that, like basketball is, is great and the financials and it, it's all aim. It's an adult, but you're still paying for college. And if something does happen, you want to sign a power of attorney, right? So I have clients that are leveraging the product for that. And then I have another client in Florida, Kevin Drummond, and he has with the police force, just exactly what you're talking about. You just start off, you're a cop, you're, you know, you're at risk, you know, something may happen to you, but you're not going to sign up for a will and pay the amount of money or even think about it at that point in time, but you do. So he's made it very, very easy for officers to sign up as part of their package and, you know, I mean, and, and able for them to do it and do it quick so that they're young. But to answer your question, it's not, I, I can't take the credit the way that the way that we're making it sound. It's really my clients. You know, it's really without trying because I want to provide value so much and I didn't ask my clients and I didn't say, hey, this is the product you got to use, which most software companies do. You buy Salesforce, this is the way you got to do it. You know, and this is the way you have to use it. I made it fully configurable and flexible. But the reason, and I did that because that's how I want to provide value for my clients. But what that allowed me to do is to learn from my clients. And every time that I am with a client, I basically understand what they need and how they can automate it. You know, and what I like to say is a tool, right? A tool, which is a software, it's a tool that you build. It's only as good as the process. So my clients' processes, they're good. And I'm able to match their process with my tool. And therefore I get this awesome product. So, you know, the process is actually fairly simple. I, I, they, you know, my clients see my product, they like it generally. And then I meet with them and I find out, you know, I sit with them and, and the first session that I have is I find out what's important to them, how they want to implement it. And each one of them, believe it or not, is a little different because they each have a different industry challenge that, that they may have that they try to solve. And then I'm able to adapt my product. And then when I do, then my product is more mature. And it's better. So it really depends on a case by case basis. You know, with the experience, we're able to do it fast and we're able to do it well. Um, but that's that's where it comes. You know, that's where the advantages are. And then in order to do that, it's it's a lot more touch. You know, you you have to touch the client and understand what they want a little more than if you you know were to get an off the shelf product. That's not like to call it. So, so I had to have that in person. I had to solve for that too. So each client that purchases my product against a, an assigned client success manager. And and they are 100%. I mean, they don't use them 40 hours a week and they have more clients, but there's no limitation because that's how I'm going to solve my client's problem. So that's really where I'm able to go through the process. And then we have, it's about four meetings that I need with the attorney before we're able to hand it off to the office. Now, if it's a on, 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 you know, on a theory that's a very small office that's getting started, then, you know, we, we meet particularly with them a lot, a, a little more. But first, we have to understand how they design, how they practice, what their workflow is. I adapt my product to that, to them and to that process. And then they're able to start using it. And I like to use the word, I mean, my goal, my objective, and I measure this, you know, or have my client success managers measure this is to make sure they can monetize on it, right? Product and software and technology shouldn't be a cost like everybody thinks. There's so much opportunity that you should be able to monetize on it. You should be able to get an ROI. And if you don't, then maybe it's not the right product, you know, and, but there's two ways to do it. It's not just money, you know, it's also a time savings. And like I said, it's cliche. So we really measure it. We really say, Hey, am I saving you time? Am I saving your office time? And I'm glad to say that 99% of the time it's a yes. If they really use the product and implement the product, it will save them time or they can reach out to other customers. They wouldn't. Yeah. It's interesting too. And it's funny. I think we, you know, uh, this is a little uh, looping in a little off podcast conversation too. It's funny because I actually was, I, I did a year in the, the value added reseller space, right? Just out, outside of college too. And like, it's the thing too, I have to say with all of the advertising that's going on for the big guys, I'm not going to name names. It's like a lot of people are selling you the house and giving you the uh, the hammer and the nails, right? Like people buy the promise of of a lot of this automation stuff. But the truth is, if you have a perfect system and a massive learning curve that you and your staff have to go for, it doesn't matter. So it's like the fact that you're meeting clients where they're at and working in their existing systems and processes is got to make such a difference in terms of how much people are actually going to implement and use this stuff when the time comes, right? 
Yeah, it really does. And I like to call it, you know, individualized. And, you know, your, your house analogy is good. I always use a car analogy in, in software, right? But the house analogy is good. Even if you have a house and from the outside, all the houses look the same. When you go inside, people are always going to individualize it. They're going to have their type of furniture that they like and, and everything the way that they want it to look and the look and feel and, you know, what everything that's within that house matches the person's culture, the person's personality, right? And that's what I'm trying to do with, with this software. It's not, we don't want to put the hammer down. We don't. And that's part of the reason why we don't say, hey, you know, you, you can't make this change because within their, within their house, I want to make this match their culture 100%. And I want to make sure that it works for them 100%. And then, then they provide value not only to themselves, but to their end users as well. Yeah. I think it's so key too. just like, you know, in general, like one of those, it's, it's one of those steps you see things falling apart so often. And this is just, you know, speaking of business services in general too, it's like the speed that you can get. And I, I look at this both as a service provider and as somebody who, you know, I'll, I'll, I buy services all the time. It's like the faster you can get that win for yourself, the more it reinforces that it's something that was the right decision to make in the first place. And, you know, if there's an ROI associated with it, then you, you just got it for free, right? That's the, whole, that's the whole idea. And you can leverage it beyond that, right? But no, that's awesome. And then, you know, I know we've talked a lot about estate planning stuff too, but do you guys do any work outside of those uh, that specific practice area? Have you guys done any other practice areas? Yeah, so we've done business law, corporate law, and then we've done divorce, um, family law, as well as um, custody. We actually have a, an app that we built with one of my clients, you know, which is a, a custody app. Um, because again, oh, that's fascinating. You know, yeah, it really is. It really is. It was, believe it or not, it was like a pretty difficult project for me because when I talk about estate planning and I could resonate to it so quick, but you know, with divorce planning, you know, and you're in Texas, but there's so many rules, you know, <laughs> even if you have shared custody and to build all those rules, but, but my client is able to give it to, um, you know, their, their end users, as I'd like to say, but also our products so or our, our legal gen product, when you make some decisions and, you know, you make some options, if you're going through family divorce and you're doing an intake, then you can actually, you can actually choose if you want the, you know, going to have shared custody or what you eventually want, if you're not going to go, because most of the time the, the cookie cutter approach to family law is a little different, you know, because, You'll have to meet in person when two people are going through a, you know, a divorce unless they do it amicably. So, so that's, that's legal gen, but legal gen has an online interview and that's been the focus that I've had the last couple of years. And that's where I build it out. That's where I get the, the, the benefits to my clients and that's where it's fully configurable. But th there is the intake process that, that I have now, and I call it a digital intake and a digital intake is any practice. It's really any business, Jan, that could use it, right? Any business that you go to, you have an intake process. Now, people can have an intake process where they, they get on the phone, you send them a document, you ask them some questions in an email, right? But now the digital intake is attorney specific with the right questions based on the practice. It's also fully configurable, but it could be any practice. I just haven't talked to you know, that many attorneys in other practice areas because we've been growing and focusing so much on the estate planning and a little bit on the family law. But there is no, what I'm trying to say is there's no limit in how we can expand out this product for other practices, but those three practices are active. But I have a few clients, client I was telling you in Florida who does criminal as well, and he's using the intake. He's using the intake for that. And the really cool thing about that is you do your intake, and I call it a, a digital intake, so not an online interview, and you just ask the questions, your assets, you know, your, you know, your, your, your situation and, and just some key questions that will allow the attorney to triage what's going to happen next, right? If it's a large office, okay, now we know how much money you make. We know how much real estate you have. If you have real estate all in the state or out of state. So now you need to go talk with this attorney, or maybe you can go online, but that triage process and that intake will, will then auto copy all the data and information into when you do start your, your digital interview, right? And that's kind of where the link, the broken link is between having your legal Zoom or having your elder counsel. There is no link that's been made. And I made the link with the interview part, right? But now I'm making the link with the digital intake as well. And that's going to expand out far beyond just, um, you know, the, just beyond estate planning, right? But it is, I, I like to, attorneys, even though everyone thinks of attorneys and they think of the law and the, and the documents and, and everything that it's very technical. It's a very technical high end. You need the expertise and you need, you know, so, so therefore when I build a product and I build it for as many estate planning attorneys as I have, 
that product solves all the technical capabilities of it automatically. And that's the online interview. The intake is a little simpler because that's kind of the front end. It's kind of the sales tool that you can use and that expands into any area. Yeah. And I'll say this too. I mean, if people don't have a script in place for their front desk people, it's kind of one of those things. I could also see that being uh, something that informs probably best practices that people should be doing anyways when they're doing the intake instead of winging it too. So I think I'm all for that. But um, Enrico, this has been awesome, man. Um, I definitely think uh, we got a couple of projects we're working on. So we're definitely going to have to get you uh, back on when some of those things end up coming live. But for anyone who's listening to this and uh, thinks this is cool or wants to implement it, what would be the best place to uh, you know get in touch or get in your world? Oh, get in touch with me. Okay, awesome. You know, where's the best place to do that? We can, we'll put this in the show yeah, notes too. So best place, I mean, um, e, e. Lynch here, my last name. So it's Enrico Lynch, but it's E. Lynch, L-I-N-S-C-H-E-E-R at LegalGen.com. LegalGen.com is, is our website. Um, my phone number is a Florida number back from when I got my first cell phone, 954. 954- Four six five 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 seven six. I always answer my phone, Jan. I mean, I tell people all the time. I don't understand. I, I kind of, I would say, appreciate people that don't respond right away. But it is so easy, right? You know, you send a text. If I'm not available, I'm going to tell you I'm not available. I'm going to get back to you, right? If I'm asleep, I'm not going to answer, but I answer in the morning. So, <laughs> phone is a really, really good way to get a hold of me. Send me a quick text. But my email is is is, is good as well. Okay, awesome. We'll get that in the show notes too for anyone else. But um, Enrico, awesome talking to you as always, man. And for everybody else, I'll see you guys next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern on the Law Firm Growth Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Law Firm Growth Podcast. For show notes, free resources, and more, head on over to casefuel.com slash podcast. Looking forward to catching up on the next episode. 